Father and of the Son and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. And the Lord be with you all. Yeah. Oh, good morning, everybody. Um, today is the feast of the martyrs way back in New York State and Canada, St. Isaac Jogues, St. Jean de Brebeuf, and some of their friends who were martyred in different towns, not all that far away, Albany, up in Canada, all these incredible people who gave their lives at the very beginning of, of, of life here in um, the church in North America. So we want to also pray for people today around the world who are in danger of death for being a Christian or for speaking out Christ's truth. Lord Jesus, you are the good shepherd who laid down his life for a sheep. Lord, have mercy. You are the Lamb of God who takes away our sins. Christ, have mercy. You are our Passover and our lasting peace. Lord, have mercy. And may Almighty God have mercy on us, forgive us our sins, and bring us to everlasting life. Amen. And let us pray. O oh God, who chose to manifest the blessed hope of your eternal kingdom by the work of Saints John de Brebeuf, Isaac, Job, and their companions, and by the shedding of their blood, graciously grant that through their intercession, the faith of Christians may be strengthened day by day. We ask it through our Lord Jesus Christ, your Son, who lives and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, one God forever and ever. Amen. Amen. Well, please be seated as we listen to the word of God. A reading from the letter of St. Paul to the Ephesians. Brothers and sisters, you have heard of the stewardship of God's grace that was given to me for your benefit, namely that the mystery was made known to me by revelation as I have written briefly earlier. When you read this, you can understand my insight into the mystery of Christ, which was not made known to human beings in other generations, as it has now been revealed to his holy apostles and prophets by the Spirit, that the Gentiles are co-heirs, members of the same body, and co-partners in the promise in Christ Jesus through the gospel. Of this, I became a minister by the gift of God's grace that was granted me in accordance with the exercise of his power. To me, the very least of all the holy ones, this grace was given to preach to the Gentiles the inscrutable riches of Christ and to bring to light for all what is the plan of the mystery hidden from ages past in God who created all things, so that the manifold wisdom of God might now be made known through the church to the principalities and authorities in the heavens. This was according to the eternal purpose that he accomplished in Christ Jesus our Lord, in whom we have boldness of speech and confidence of access through faith in him. The word of the Lord. You will draw water joyfully from the springs of salvation. You will draw water joyfully from the springs of salvation. God indeed is my savior. I am confident and unafraid. My strength and my courage is the Lord, and he has been my savior. With joy you will draw water at the fountain of salvation. You will draw water joyfully from the springs of salvation. Give thanks to the Lord, acclaim his name, 
among the nations make known his deeds, proclaim how exalted is his name. You will draw water joyfully from the springs of salvation. Sing praise to the Lord for his glorious achievement. Let this be known throughout all the earth. Shout with exultation, O city of Zion, for great in your midst is the Holy One of Israel. You will draw water joyfully from the springs of salvation. Lord be with you. A reading from the Holy Gospel according to Luke. Jesus said to his disciples, Be sure of this. If the master of the house had known the hour when the thief was coming, he would not have let his house be broken into. You also must be prepared. For at an hour you do not expect the Son of Man will come. And then Peter said, Lord, is this parable meant for us or for everyone? And the Lord replied, Who then is the faithful and prudent steward whom the master will put in charge of his servants to distribute the food allowance at the proper time? Blessed is that servant whom his master on arrival finds doing so. Truly, I say to you, he will put him in charge of all his property. But if that servant says to himself, my master is delayed in coming, and if he begins to beat the men servants and the maid servants to eat and drink and get drunk, then that servant's master will come on an unexpected day at an unknown hour. And he will severely punish that servant and assign him a place with the unfaithful. That servant who knew his master's will but did not make preparations nor act in accord with his will shall be beaten severely. And the servant who was ignorant of his master's will but acted in a way deserving of a severe beating shall be beaten only lightly. Much will be required of the person entrusted with much, and still more will be demanded of the person entrusted with more. The Gospel of the Lord. Praise to you, Lord Jesus Christ. This particular gospel is, is very confusing because it's actually a whole bunch of different statements of Jesus from different times that St. Luke put together. So they don't quite go together, but I always love the last ones. If you knew what you were supposed to do and you didn't do it, you could be beaten severely. And if you didn't know, but you didn't do it, just get less beat. So no matter what happens, you're in trouble. <laughs> you don't have a chance. It's just a wonderful gospel. There's a great line, you know the song, uh, the, the play, The Man of La Mancha. And there's this character, Sancho Pancha, uh, Sancho, I can't say it today, Panza, who's a comedian, like uh, foil to Don Quixote. But he's got this line, whether the stone hits the pitcher or the pitcher hits the stone, it's going to be bad for the pitcher. <laughs> and, and there you go. It, this is what this gospel reminds me of. No matter what you do, it's going to hurt. Um, but I'd like to move into a broader context for it. In this, we're going to be reading now the letter to the Ephesians. And, and in it, Paul's trying to say that 
there is a mystery now revealed in Christ Jesus that has been hidden since the foundation of the world. And Paul and his people are writing this maybe 50 years, 40 years after Jesus rose. And it took them a while to realize that Jesus was not just a holy preacher in Palestine, but that Jesus was the very image of God. And not only that, that all of creation took place in Christ Jesus. And yet this incredible cosmic figure is also the same Jesus who loved us, who taught with us, who died on the cross, who saved us by his blood. But this is something new that people have just come to realize. Also, he's saying that it's the plan of God that was hidden from all ages, the plan of God to that the, the Gentiles, that all the non-Jews, that everybody in the whole world is now called to the body of Christ, to the one body. Christ fills the universe in all its parts, and Christ wants to fill and does fill in his own way all people, all people. And if we want to be God's servants and good Christians, we have to be on that wavelength. God is in all people, all people. And when we start to set up borders and boundaries and quick, you know, look down on these people, and we are really in bad trouble. We'll be beaten severely. <laughs> That's the stuff that God doesn't want. And there are people who are telling us, oh, you, it's okay to be a good Christian, but you don't have to like that person. And you don't have to like Jews, and you don't have to like black people. You, know. you baby, watch out. <laughs> watch out. That's not at all what Jesus was here for or what God's incredible plan is about. So today, we have this wonderful thing. You know, you don't want to be beaten severely. You don't even want to be beaten at all. But if you want to be a really good servant, you have to try to carry out God's plan, which is indeed to bit by bit, by our example, by our love, by witnessing to the gospel, to try to bring all people into this mystery because they're already there in Christ Jesus. It's just to help them see and understand what God's already doing. In some ways, this great example of these Jesuit missionaries in Canada and New York back in the early 1600s is a great example. That's what they were trying to do, to help share this light with the peoples there as best they could, as best they could. So let us pray then for this church of God that is already all over the world, that we learn to love all the brothers and sisters, to treat them as equals, and that we learn to spread this good news of God's love. We pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. And on this feast of these missionary martyrs, let us pray for all those people today who go out as missionaries, lay people, religious priests, that God give them courage and wisdom and love to love all the people they're near. We pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. We want to pray for peace throughout the earth and all the countries and places where violence seems to reign, that the peacemakers never lose heart, People reach out to help one another. We pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayers. And let us.
us pray for all of our volunteers and friends who are coming together now for this tag sale. Just that all their efforts be rewarded, their generosity just be appreciated by God, by us. We pray to the Lord. We pray for those who are ill. All these many people we know who are getting ready for surgery, for treatments. We pray for Jerry Bucus, who will have surgery on Friday, for Paul Dershow, who's having surgery today. All those still suffering around the world from the pandemic. We pray to the Lord. Lord hear our prayer. And then we pray for our dearly departed they would see God face to face and one day we all join together and we pray today for Margaret King anniversary of her death we pray still for John Showalter for his eternal rest the mass is offered for Antoni Guzik and Gustav Bieber and Bob Box that God's light shine on them we pray to the Lord Let's take a moment just to remember the people, the things that we carry most in our hearts this morning. We pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. Oh God, we thank you for letting your good news and the mysteries of your wisdom be revealed to us. Help us to appreciate that and to share it with others. And we pray it through Christ our Lord. Amen. Amen. Please be seated. Blessed are you, Lord God of all creation, for through your goodness we have received the bread that we offer you. Fruit of the earth, work of human hands, it will become for us the bread of life. Amen. Blessed be God forever. And blessed are you, Lord God of all creation, for through your goodness we have received the wine we offer you. Fruit of the vine, work of human hands, it will become for our spiritual drink. Blessed, blessed be God forever. So, brothers, sisters, let us pray that our sacrifice will be acceptable to God, the Almighty Father. May the Lord accept the sacrifice of your hands and the praise and glory of his name for our good and the good of all his holy church. As we venerate the passion of your martyrs, St. John de Brebeuf and Isaac Jogues and their companions, grant that through this sacrifice, Lord, we may proclaim worthily the death of your only begotten son, who, not content with encouraging the martyrs by word, strengthened them likewise by example. He who lives and reigns forever and ever. Amen. The Lord be with you. And with your spirit. And lift up your hearts. We lift them up to the Lord. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is truly right and just, our duty, our salvation, always and everywhere, to give you thanks, Lord, Holy Father, almighty and eternal God. For you are glorified when your saints are praised. Their very sufferings are but wonders of your might. In your mercy, you give ardor to their faith. To their endurance, you grant firm resolve. And in their struggle, the victory is yours through Jesus the Lord. And therefore all creatures of heaven and earth sing a new song in adoration. And we, with all the hosts of angels, cry out without ending as we acclaim, Holy, Holy, Holy Lord, God of hosts, 
heaven and earth are full of your glory. Hosanna in the highest. Blessed is he who comes in the name of the Lord. Hosanna. Holy, O Lord, and all you have created rightly gives you praise through your Son, our Lord Jesus Christ. By the power and working of the Holy Spirit, you give life to all things and make them holy. And you never cease to gather a people to yourself, so that from the rising of the sun to its setting, a pure sacrifice may be offered to your name. And therefore, O Lord, we humbly implore you, by the same Spirit, graciously make holy these gifts that we have brought to you for consecration, that they may become the body and blood of your Son, our Lord Jesus Christ, at whose command we celebrate these mysteries. For on the night that he was betrayed, he himself took bread, and giving you thanks, he said the blessing and broke the bread, and he gave it to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and eat of it. For this is my body, which will be given up for you. And in a similar way, when the supper was ended, he took the chalice. And once more giving thanks, he gave it to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you drink from it, for this is the chalice of my blood, the blood of the new and eternal covenant, which will be poured out for you and for many for the forgiveness of sins. Do this in memory of me. mystery of faith, we proclaim your death, O Lord, and profess your resurrection until you come again. And therefore, Lord, as we celebrate the memorial of the saving passion of your Son, his wondrous resurrection and ascension into heaven, and as we look forward to his second coming, we offer you in thanksgiving this holy and living sacrifice. Look, we pray, upon the oblation of your church, and recognizing the sacrificial victim by whose death you willed to reconcile us to yourself, grant that we, who are nourished by the body and blood of your Son, and filled with his Holy Spirit, that we may become one body, one spirit in Christ. And may he make of us an everlasting gift to you, so that we may obtain an inheritance with your elect, and especially with the most blessed Virgin Mary, the mother of God, and blessed Joseph, our spouse, with your blessed apostles and all the glorious martyrs and with all the saints on whose constant intercession in your presence we rely for unfailing help. And then, Lord, may this sacrifice of our reconciliation we pray advance the peace and salvation of all the world. Be pleased to confirm in faith and charity your pilgrim church on earth with your servant Francis, our Pope, and Leonard, our Bishop, the order of bishops and the clergy and the entire people you have gained for your own. And listen graciously to the prayers of this family you have summoned here before you, and in your compassion, O merciful Father, gather to yourself all your children scattered throughout the world. Remember, Lord, your servants, our dear ones, whom you have called from this world to yourself. Grant that they who were united with your son in a death like his may also be one with him in his resurrection, when from the earth he will raise up in the flesh those who have died 
and transform our lowly body after the pattern of his own glorious body. To our departed brothers and sisters, to all who are pleasing to you at their passing from this life, give kind admittance to your kingdom. For there we hope to enjoy forever the fullness of your glory. Then you will wipe away every tear from our eyes. For seeing you, our God, as you are, we shall be like you for all the ages and praise you without end through Christ the Lord, through whom you bestow on the world all that is good. Through him and with him and in him, O God, Almighty Father, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, all glory and honor is yours forever and ever. So let us pray that we be good servants, faithful ones, and help to bring on the full kingdom of God on this earth. We say, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. And deliver us, Lord, we pray, from every evil. And graciously grant peace in our days, that by the help of your mercy, we may be always free from sin and safe from all distress. As we await the blessed hope and the coming of our Savior, Jesus Christ. For the kingdom, the power, and the glory are yours now and forever. Lord Jesus Christ, who said to your apostles, Peace I leave you, my peace I give you. Look not on our sins, but on the faith of your church, and graciously grant her peace and unity in accordance with your will. You who live and reign forever and ever. May the peace of the Lord be with you always. And with your spirit. Peace. <laughs> Lamb of God, you take away the sins of the world. Have mercy on us. Lamb of God, you take away. Take away the sins of the world. Grant us peace. Behold the Lamb of God. Behold him who takes away the sins of the world. And blessed are those called to the supper of the Lamb. Lord, I am not worthy. and the blood of the Lord keep us all together unto everlasting life. for the reception of Holy Communion. You could stay in your place, and I'll just kind of pass uh, around you.
having fed upon heavenly delights. We humbly ask you, Lord, that by the example of St. John de Brebeuf and Isaac Joves and their companions, we may bear in our hearts the marks of your son's charity and suffering and ever enjoy the fruit of perpetual peace. And we ask it through Christ our Lord. Amen. The Lord be with you. May Almighty God bless you, and the Father, and the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Amen. Amen. And our celebration is ended, so let us go in peace. Amen. Thanks be to God. Well, thank you, everybody. I don't have to tell you that the tag sale is underway. <laughs> this is drop-off day, and tomorrow starts the real sale. So if you're fooled by it, do come by. Take care.